Hello there all, welcome back to another video. In the previous one, we have seen how to create a table digital asset. In this video, we are going to go back to the same asset and make it a bit more user friendly. Now here in a new scene, let me start by creating the table digital asset again. In this table digital asset, we have added in a couple of parameters like length and width according to how we might have to set the size of the table. This being an architectural asset, these might be something essential. We might be told to create a table of a specific length. But now we have created this particular parameter called the leg thickness which if I change we can see the actual length and width of the table has suddenly changed. So even though I have length and width created they have no bearing on the final length and width of the table. So I want to go ahead and correct this using a simple expression so that changing the leg thickness does not actually go ahead and change my length and width for the entire table. Now if I want to start editing the digital asset, we can see that it's all locked up. So I need to first unlock the digital asset by right clicking and telling allow editing of contents. This turns the name of the node red and also unlocks all of the nodes. Now what I actually want to do is basically if I go and start changing the leg thickness, we can see that what this node is doing is adding an additional length on top of the actual length and adding an additional width on top of the actual width. So basically from the final length and width I only want the leg thickness subtracted. So if I dive into the digital asset I have this control object which is still here. Having this object here makes things a lot easier for me right now because this control object is the one which is actually controlling all the parameters on all of these nodes. So all I need to do is go only to the control object and edit things. Here we see the length and the width of the object is coming in from the parent node. So double dot is a parent and from there it's bringing the LX value. So to subtract the thickness all I need to do is copy the thickness value which I can do from right here and over here I'll just subtract the actual length by the thickness and here the width by the thickness. I hit enter and you can see suddenly digital asset just decreased in size a little. Now if I come back to my object and start changing the leg thickness you can see the actual table no longer increases in size but the actual mesh itself is changing so that it accommodates for the additional size of the legs. Now the next thing I want to look at is the legs. Here if I start increasing the leg thickness we can see the legs start to overlap and this is going to give us a lot of flickering during render which we want to avoid. So what I want the legs to do is as soon as the slider reaches a point where two legs touch I want it to not go beyond that particular value. So before we actually go set that up I want to set up a simple graph so it becomes much easier to understand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the leg thickness to zero on the first frame, key the value go to the last frame, increase it to the max available here and again key that. Now if I want to see the actual graph which this has produced I can shift click on the leg thickness and now I can see the graph for the thickness is scoped here in the channel editor. I can select the graph and make it linear so it's easier to understand. Also let's just spin the graph so that when I change my context the graph does not get unscoped. Now. If I come to my control object, here we remember that the length parameter, we had actually subtracted the length parameter by the thickness, but we just animated the thickness, that means the length parameter is also animated. By shift clicking on the length parameter now, we can see the length is going downwards whereas the thickness is increasing. Also at the same time, another thing we have to take care of is I want to go ahead and scope this leg thickness parameter. But if I shift click on this, we can see that this does not get scoped in the control object. The reason for that is because there is no expression, there is no actual mathematical expression or function which can be mapped which Houdini knows of. So just to avoid this, I'll just go add that with zero. This gives us a simple function which can be graphed. Now shift clicking on this, make sure that this can also be scoped. If I go ahead remove the leg thickness and just scope length and leg thickness from the control object now we can see the thickness is going up and the length is going down. I'll also go ahead and pin these values so that we can look at all of them together. Because leg thickness and the leg thickness from the parameter at the top are coming in the same way they're both overlapping for now. 
Now coming to the actual expression which can stop the legs from expanding, let's just take a look at the table and understand where we want it to stop. Now, here we can see that uh, once the table legs reach the thickness which is almost exactly half of the complete length of the table on one side, we want them to stop. So if I come back onto my table and set this value somewhere around 7 while the table thickness value is at around 3.5, that is the maximum I want. Basically this is supposed to be half of the width value. So to get this expression, I can make use of the min function. Let's see how we can use it. Here on the leg thickness, I'll click in the uh, text box, but this text box is very small to edit expressions. So I can press Alt E on the keyboard. This opens the expression editor. Here, let me make some room. And the expression I'm going to make use of is the min function. And the way the min function works is it takes two arguments, A and B, it checks which one of them has the least value and then it returns the one with the least value. So the two least values I want to check for now are the leg thickness. So I'll go take this in. I'll put that as the first argument. And the next argument I want is the actual half of the width of my table. So I'll copy the entire length, place that as my second argument and divide that by two. Now I'll accept my expression. It has come in here for leg thickness. And now if I go back to my time slider, start increasing, you can see as soon as my table reaches that particular value, it stops, the legs stop expanding. But we can see that the table itself is decreasing but the legs are no longer expanding. To understand this better, let me go back to the frame 85, shift click on the leg thickness. When I do this, we can see that in the graph, the legs have suddenly stopped expanding as soon as they reach that particular point. If I open up my width graph, we can see that is where the actual width intersects my thickness graph. So by using the min function, it actually created a graph where once the thickness reaches the minimum point, it uses that point from then on. But the reason for the actual table shrinking right now is you can see here the width is actually decreasing even though the legs, the thickness of the legs have stopped. So if I even load in the length into the graph, we can see the length is continuously decreasing even though the thickness has stopped. The reason for this is both the length and the width expression here are making use of the thickness which is coming in from the actual digital asset, not the corrected leg thickness which we have here in the same node itself. So to correct this, all I need to do is change the values here. So just let me change the uh, value here for the length for now. Change the channel option there a little so that it's using the channel thick directly from the same node. When I do this, we can see the length came in at that particular point became a flat line. So similarly for the width, I'll do the same thing. Remove the parent option there and immediately my width also stopped. Now if I come back again and see this graph here, we start from one where the leg thickness is zero, which also has to be edited. I keep playing forward. It reaches a particular point and then stops. It no longer expands and this is still working even though my leg thickness here is continuously still increasing. So if I shift click here, we can see our leg thickness is continuously increasing. It's no longer stopping, but we have our legs working much more realistically for now. Now obviously we don't want to stop right here. If I go to a certain uh, distance and now start changing the actual length of my table, we can see that length still doesn't have any effect. If I change the width value, the thickness decreases. But if I change the length value, it has no effect. The reason for this is the leg thickness value is making use of only the width function to get the minimum value. It has no bearing on the actual LZ, the length value. So we have to replace this by either the length or the width depending on which is the smallest. We already know the function we need to use to get the smallest, which is the min function. So let's do this. Here I'll Alt E on this. It opens up my expression editor. What I basically want is a min function which gives me the smallest from my z and my x. So basically my length and width. And this is what I want to use here instead of just one value. So I'll take this out and I'll put this in here. Now I'll accept this 
and immediately my entire table is almost done I can change the length value we can see the leg thickness automatically changes I can change the width value and still my leg thickness automatically changes I can change my leg thickness itself and still my table works perfectly if I change the length and width this is directly giving me the actual size of my table itself also if I select my digital asset press enter it gives me my bounding box which is the actual size of my table itself I can change the length and width together I can change the height or I can change anything else I want now Finally, one last thing I want to finalize on this digital asset is I want to be able to change the thickness of the tabletop itself. So let's see how to add in an extra function after all these edits finally on the final digital asset. Now to add in the actual final tabletop thickness value, what I'm going to do is right click on my digital asset, go into type properties. Type properties is where I want to always make my edits for digital assets which I want to be permanent. I go into parameters and I know the parameter I want actually exists in one of the nodes already. So I'll just go to the nodes for now and here let's see which node I want it to come from. Here if I dive in we know the thickness value is what we are going to edit and if I change the thickness here we can see we actually change the thickness of the tabletop and that is nothing but the translate in Z axis. So coming back here I'll dive into the object inside my digital asset here I have my thickness object here on the local we have translate and translate Z is what I want. I'll go drag and drop that under my table this is my tabletop thickness I'll just change the translate label to be what I want so the top thickness. That is done I hit accept now coming back out I have a top thickness which I can change to tell how thick my tabletop is supposed to be. So that's it for this particular video. I hope you guys found it useful. If you have any critics, comments or suggestions they are always welcome below the video and I'll definitely get back to you. Now I hope to see you guys in the next video where we'll be finalizing on this particular digital asset. Till then goodbye.